Good morning and uh, welcome here to Morning Prayer on this uh, Thursday morning, the uh, 4th of February. It's a great pleasure and privilege to welcome you here this morning for uh, this time together. Uh, I hope this finds you well in good heart and in good spirits. Um, she's been hanging around for for a little while now I've been I've been kind of half ready most of the time and she's been hanging around uh, desperate I think to get onto onto camera uh, even if it's not her face getting onto camera so but just uh, let her calm down a little bit I hope this finds you uh, as I say I hope this finds you well in good heart and in good spirits Um, oh, a quick reminder that this evening we will have um, night prayer at nine o'clock this evening. We'll have um, a time of uh, compline. So um, I hope you're able to, to, to join me for that. Um, tomorrow will be morning prayer and Saturday. Um, yeah, those two days. And then uh, for all together worship on Sunday at 10 o'clock, um, preceded by um, our Oasis meeting. So um, uh, look forward to, to being together for that. Now I do understand that there is, has been, some confusion about the readings. And I do apologise um, for that yesterday, I think some, some of you, if you were following on the internet and following through the Church of England website, would have had the readings from Corinthians and there's one from Hosea as well. Um, and I did the reading from Ecclesiastes and John, which were the ones that were on the app. When I went to look at my pink book yesterday, I have a pink book, lectionary book for this year, and uh, I, I looked at the readings. Uh, I noticed that Ecclesiastes wasn't in there, uh, and actually uh, neither was John. So I don't quite know where that came from. And um, it was pointed out last night that that wasn't what was on the on the website. Indeed, it wasn't, and indeed it isn't today. So I'm a bit perplexed about where those. Uh, readings came from and I'm, I'm looking through um, I'm looking through and I still can't uh, um, I still can't find them so I, I, I don't know why these readings are on the app so today I'm going to follow from the uh, I'm going to follow the the website so we'll go back to a reading from from Corinthians uh, the reading from Ecclesiastes I would encourage you to read I think it's the rest of chapter 3 and uh, it's, it is a fascinating, fascinating book. And I was, as I, I, I scrolled through it uh, before, uh, just a moment ago, and I, and I, and I thought, oh, which to choose, which to choose. But I think we'll stick with, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to Corinthians today. And I do apologise um, for that, uh, um, for that uh, mix-up. Not quite sure how it happened. Just going to respond to Jacob. Today is uh, another day where we commemorate or we, we remember uh, somebody. And it's Gilbert. Of Sim I'm probably going to pronounce this incorrectly. I hope I can't. I hope I don't. I'm not sure I can. Gilbert of Sempringham. Gilbert of Sempringham, founder of the Gilbertine Order in 1189. Gilbert was born in Sempringham, Lincolnshire. His father, Jocelyn, yeah, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, was a wealthy Norman knight. His mother, an Englishwoman of humble rank. Gilbert studied in France, a priest. However, Gilbert, Gilbert 
received the support of the Bishop of Lincoln and became a member of the Bishop. Uh, I don't know whether I disappeared then for a moment. It said that I disconnected. Hopefully you can still see me. Uh, anyway, uh, Gilbert received the support of the Bishop of Lincoln and he became a member of the Bishop's household. In 1123, the new Bishop of Lincoln ordained him priest. Gilbert was offered an archdeaconry, the archdeaconry of Lincoln, but he refused, saying that he knew no surer way to, to perdition. On the death of his father, he returned to Sempringham and became Lord of the Manor. However, his newfound position in society did not change his austere lifestyle, and he continued to give much of his income away. It was at Sempringham that he renewed his acquaintance with a group of seven women whom he knew from his earlier teaching career. They desired to live a life of devotion to God, but they were unable to form a monastery on their own. Gilbert present, presented the women with a rule of life, largely based on the rule of St. Benedict, and emphasised seclusion and solitude. Through the patronage of Gilbert, the group received the support of the Bishop of Lincoln and grew rapidly. The growth required good government and Gilbert, excuse me, applied to the Cistercians for oversight. Although his request was denied, the order grew rapidly and for two years he, continually, he was continually founding new community and houses. Thirteen houses were founded in Gilbert's life, four of which were for men only. There were approximately 1,500 members of his order at its height. The Gilbertines were the were the only purely English monastic order and owed allegiance to no foreign superiors, unlike the Cluniacs and the Cistercians. This brought them uh, much support and financial assistance from the Crown. By the time of the dissolution of the monasteries in 1536, there were 26 communities throughout England. Gilbert was a supporter of Thomas Becket, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and helped him escape from the king to the continent after the Council of Northampton in 1164. Thomas, dressed as a Gilbertine monk, spent time in the houses before crossing the sea, in their houses before crossing the sea. Gilbert was summoned before the king to explain his action, actions, but obtained pardon and immunity for himself and his order. Hmm. So Gilbert of Sempringham. Fascinating life, uh, um, you know, one of those uh, examples uh, as Jesus spoke to the young ruler who, who says, I follow the law, I, I follow this, I do all this and I do all that. What more do I need to do to earn eternal life? Give up all your possessions and give to the poor. And it broke that man's heart because he didn't feel that he could do it. Well, Gilbert um, led a life of devotion to God. He was seeking to bring God's kingdom to earth. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase. And God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, 
So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We're going to use Psalm 15 today, a short psalm, but we're going to use Psalm 15. And I'm going to move the cat off a piece of paper that's quite important. Through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. I do apologise. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, who may rest upon your holy hill, whoever leads an uncorrupt life and does that, the thing that is right, who speaks the truth from the heart and bears no deceit on the tongue, who does no evil to a friend and pours no scorn on a neighbour, in whose sight the wicked are not esteemed, but who honours those who fear the Lord, whoever has sworn to a neighbour and never goes back on that word, who does not lend money in hope of gain, nor takes a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never fall. Through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. Lord, lead us to our heavenly home by single steps of self-restraint and deeds of righteousness through the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I put quick with the Amen then. We have glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Uh, Pippa is indeed quite cute. You can just see the top of her ears then. Although I wasn't saying that at five to three this morning when she scratched my face. Was I? No, not really. If you would like to read today's Old Testament reading, you could, according to one version, you could read Ecclesiastes 3, um, carry on from where we read yesterday, um, or Hosea 11, um, verse 12 through to chapter 12 or all of chapter 12 so Hosea verse 12 and then right through all of chapter 12 we're going to move on to the song of the covenant I've given you as a light to the nations and I've called you in righteousness Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, I've called you in righteousness. We are now going to move on to our New Testament reading. And the New Testament reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, beginning to read at verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. And again, um, if you've just joined and are looking at the app, you will have a different reading. They're different um, from 
what's on the lectionary for one thing um, and what's on the um, what you might find on the website so I do apologize if you're looking at the app um, because we're going to continue with 1 Corinthians brothers and sisters do not be children in your thinking rather be infants in evil but in thinking be adults in the law it is written by people of strange tongues and by the lips of foreigners I will speak to this people yet even then they will not listen to me says the Lord tongues then are a sign not for believers but for unbelievers while prophecy is not for unbelievers but for believers If, therefore, the whole church comes together and all speak in tongues, and outsiders or unbelievers enters, enter, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if all prophecy, an unbeliever or outsider who enters, is reproved by all and called to account by all, after the secrets of the unbeliever's hearts are disclosed, that person will bow down before God and worship him, declaring God is really among you. What should be done then, my friends? When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be only one or uh, only two or three um, Sorry, let there only be two or three at most, or most three, excuse me. Let me start that sentence again. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be only two, or at most three, and each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let them be silent in church and speak to themselves and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to someone else sitting nearby, let the first person be silent, for all, for you can all prophesy one by one, so that may, all may learn and be in, all be encouraged. And the spirits of prophets are subject to the prophets, for God is a God not of disorder, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints, Here come the eyebrows. Women should be silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be subordinate, as the law also says. If, it, if there is anything they desire to know, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Or did the word of God originate with you, or, or are you the only ones it has reached? Anyone who claims to be a prophet or has super spiritual powers must acknowledge that what I am writing to you is a command of the Lord. Anyone who does not recognise this is to be recognised. So, my friends, be eager to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues, for all things should be done decently and in order. This is the word of the Lord. OK, so now I wish I used the app. I wish I was reading from John. Um, I have to say, and if you're following on the internet, thank you very much, Alvin. If you're following on the internet, you will see that that very controversial bit is in brackets. Um, I'm on a tablet, so I can't look at the Bible to see what the notes might say, but I, I will look later. Um, I, I, I think that that is probably very dated. And it's in brackets mainly because um, I don't really think it makes sense anymore. And, and I don't think, uh, far be it from me to, to question the, um, uh, question the Bible. I don't mean to question the Bible at all. Um, but <laughs> I, I think we've moved on and evolved as people of God 
and as Christians. And we recognise that actually humankind can prophesy, humankind can speak wisdom into God's word and all of us um, have a part to play in the building of the kingdom of God, an equal part, different things to do, uh, different parts of the church, but together we come together as the family of God and um, there are many uh, different people within our church uh, as a whole and we all have different skills and we all have different gifts and we all have different things that we might not be quite so good at. Both men and women have many skills, both many men and women have things that might not be quite so uh, uh, put it this way, I've sat in churches sometimes um, where a, a, a man has been speaking or preaching and I've wondered whether they should be staying, staying silent, um, even in their best intentions, um, or at least staying silent after the first uh, 20 minutes of what they have to say. However, I very, very much digress. Uh, or straight dig a hole for myself. But it is about coming together and coming together to build up God's kingdom. Let all things be done for building up. We all have a part to play in that. And during this time of isolation, during this time of perhaps exile from our buildings, coming together as a people, whether that be on Zoom, on Facebook, or whatever way that might be, over the phone, we look to build each other up. With our comments, or with our emojis, uh, with um, messages, emails and letters and, and phone calls, we look to build each other up. Through our prayers, we look to build each other up. To the time, very much like when we read in, um, in books of the Bible, such as um, um, Nehemiah and Ezra, when we can come back together where there is a kind of restoration and that celebration uh, will be great when we can come together as fully as possible. But let's continue to build each other up. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Thank you, Ros, for pointing that out. Yeah, God is a God not of disorder, but of peace. And in even, even in those things which we see as chaos and disorder, we can find uh, God seeking to bring his light that darkness, sinking, seeking to bring that peace into that chaos. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I've just clicked on um, the Gloria, Gloria in Excelsis, the song of God's glory. So um, We'll veer, veer away from the, ben, uh, the Benedictus for today. If you'd like to click on the little blue link, and that will be on the app as well. Um, 
we'll say this together uh, and then we will return back to um, our liturgy and we'll move into our intercessions. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're going to move on to our intercessions now, so we continue in our prayer and uh, we're going to use our blessings. Now I found them earlier, I probably lost them. I downloaded something else. Uh, my Kindle is temperamental to say the least. Uh, it's a bit like me. It's getting uh, forgetful in its old age, I suppose you might say. Uh, the hair is all over the place. find these blessings. Speaking out blessings into our parishes, into our churches, in our, in our communities, into God's world comes from the Bible which tells us when we speak blessings over people, God responds. So claiming the promises of God's word, we pray in the name of Jesus, our Saviour and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, we take upon ourselves the authority Jesus delegated to us, and in his name we speak to every household across our community. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We bless your relationships that they may be strong and whole. We bless the relationship between each partner, that it may be loving, forgiving, merciful and strong. We bless every intergenerational relationship within each household, that there may be peace and love and understanding flowing between each one. And where that has broken down, where there is peril and danger, we pray for protection and release for those uh, in danger this day. In Jesus' name, we bless every network of wholesome and supportive friendship. We bless your health that you may be strong and well. In Jesus' name, we resist any sickness or disease which seeks to invade these communities. And to every person, we say, be well, be strong, be healthy. And to any who are sick right now, we say we bless you in the name, in Jesus' name, for a speedy recovery. And we lift up to you, dear Father, all those who are on our hearts this day. And we name just some of them. For John, for Natalie, for Dorinda, for Trudy, for Jackie, Peg, Judith, Julie, 
Lizzie. Mark. Dennis. Kristen. Abby. William. Pauline. Linda. Roy. Stuart. Beryl. Eunice. George. Bob. Mary. Bex. John. Mary, Mary, Jordan and her father, Astrid, Kath, Joe, David, Kate, Eileen, Leslie, Wendy, I pray for Jim and Joe, and to all those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, we, we say we bless you in Jesus' name for a speedy and full recovery. And Lord, we do indeed also pray for those and we pray, Lord, they will feel the blessings and hope that you have set before us, those who are mourning this day the loss of a loved one. We lift before you, Isa. And we uh, commend her to your care your eternal care this day. And we pray for Jim and Joe and all the family as they mourn her passing. May they all know the promises you have set before us of a place with you, where uh, in a place where there is no more pain, tears or suffering. May that hope and comfort be real in their hearts this day. We bless those who are in the autumn of their lives and all those who live and work in residential care, that they may know the peace and presence of God in their hearts. And in Jesus' name, we pray that they will have assurance and hope for the future. We speak blessings of patience, wisdom and love to all carers and associated staff. We do indeed pray for our local care homes, all those that work in there, and those who work in domiciliary care. We pray, dear Father, that they will have resilience and indeed that assurance and hope for the future in such an uncertain present. May they have protection and good health. We bless the wealth of every person in our communities that they may have plenty to replace poverty. We bless you to have enough to live and enough to give. We bless the work of your hands, that whatever you turn your hand to, which is wholesome, may be profitable. We bless every wholesome enterprise that's conducted by you, that it may prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, we bless the businesses operating within our bounds and across our nation, across our town and nation, 
that they will flourish and employ employer relations will be wholesome, fair and full of integrity, even at this most challenging of times. We bless our local schools, preschools, nurseries, colleges and universities. We bless, we pray that they will be safe and secure for staff and pupils alike. We bless the children's capacity to learn and to develop relationships. We pray for all of those who are on our hearts, all those young people who are learning to grow, who are learning to develop relationships in this most trickiest, most challenging of times. We bring, before the, we bring all of them before you now. Again, naming just some of those who are on our hearts. Joel, Talitha, Grace, Emily, Lily, Jacob, Hannah, Jake, Austin, Kerry, Anton, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie, Travis, Nathan, Ruby, Noah, Edie, Charlie, Jack and Mia. We bless all staff and governors. We pray that they will know that they can trust and flourish if they put their faith in the Lord Jesus. We lift before you today all those working across uh, the sector, looking after young people. We pray for Marie, for Heather, Sarah, Matthew, Asher, Rebecca, Chris, Joshua, Sue, Susan, Gareth, Nick, Lisa and Noel. And we pray your blessing on all contact the church has with them and all schools. In Jesus' name. We bless the local doctors, nurses, district nurses, carers, pharmacists, all the staff of Sunderwell Courts, all staff at um, clinics, hospitals, doctor surgeries, vaccination centres, um, testing centres, laboratories, all logistics staff, cleaners, administrators. We give you thanks for the NHS. We give you thanks for all those who are working to keep um, us healthy, whatever those challenges may be. We pray for them this day and we ask your blessings on them, dear Father, of protection, of energy, We pray for them as they minister to people that they may have indeed protection, wisdom, guidance, gentleness and understanding for pa their patients and all those in their care. We pray for the emergency services as they operate within our bounds and across our communities that they may be blessed with safety, protection and wisdom. We bless those working in our emergency services this day. We pray for our national governments and our local um, governments. Pray for the parish councils and our borough council. We pray, Lord, that they may be blessed as they serve their communities and may be guided as they seek the best for them and look towards the future with wisdom. 
and for all those working for those agencies and in those uh, organisations, we pray for your blessing. For our social workers, such as Claire. For those working in public health at the moment, seeking to, uh, and, and, and for the local authorities, seeking to make sure that people still get their medicines, seeking to make sure that uh, folk are fed seeking to make sure people's daily needs are met. We give you thanks for their work and pray for them in their endeavours. And we speak to all Christians in our communities and we say we bless you in the name of the Lord, that the Holy Spirit and the word of God will flow out from you in power. We bless the hearts of all who live here that you may be quickened to hear and respond to the voice of the living God. We bless all who live and work here, that the overspill of blessings and the presence of the kingdom of God may fall upon you and all those that you love this day and always. Amen. And our collect for today. Almighty God, by whose grace alone we are accepted and called to your service. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit and make us worthy of our calling through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray whichever version, translation or language you wish. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you again for joining me today. It is a great privilege uh, to come together. Um, I hope you all have a good and safe day. Um, I hope this, uh, this day uh, is a blessing for you. Um, I have just uh, gone on to um, the commonprayer.net website which we sometimes use on a Saturday uh, it's really just to remind me of the first line of the blessing which I like using um, but it's telling me at the top that Rosa Parks was born this day uh, in 1913 um, when she was 42 Parks refused to give up her seat on a city bus in Montgomery Alabama to a white passenger which at the time the law required for African Americans she was arrested for her act of civil disobedience and worked with others from the NA, NAACP to start the Montgomery bus boycott. The resulting in integration of city buses in Montgomery ignited the civil rights movement in the United States and inspired non-violent movements for social change around the world. So uh, a remarkable woman to remember on this day, as well as uh, Gilbert, who was a remarkable man on this day. Uh, people that stood for justice, people that stood for righteousness, uh, people that we can look towards as a, a light uh, who would shine that light of righteousness and justice, striving to bring God's kingdom to earth. So with that in mind, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. 
May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again in two hour doors. God bless you. And uh, tonight at nine o'clock, uh, there'll be Compline. So in about what, 11 hours and 15 minutes. See you soon. Have a good day.